Fredo is here for grooming today. He is a Coton. I have put a bath mat on top of my table and a cotton bath mat on top of that. He's already had a bath. So we're going to do his blow drying and brushing. The tools that I'm going to use on him are an Artero double-sided slicker brush. It is flexible. A Chris Christensen butter comb number four. 004. A Madden pin brush, medium firm. And so here is Fredo. He just got out of the bathtub. For his safety, I am going to put on the Grummer's harness. And because he is a little anxious and worried, I am also going to put a leash on him until he settles down. He may be worried about the drying process, but I only use quiet blow dryers. This is a Shern Bayo wall mount dryer that I'm using on him, and it is, it is nice and quiet. So while he's getting used to the air blowing on him, I'm just going to continue to towel dry him and rub him while he processes that information and thinks about it. You can see I'm looking at the dryer periodically, trying to get away because he anticipates a loud noise, which is not going to happen in my salon. I do not use noisy blow dryers. So I'm going to go ahead and hook him to the leash so he can only back so far. My reason for doing this is he likes to be saved and pop up into my arms. So I'm going to stand just out of his reach. So he has to be responsible for himself instead of me holding him. Because me holding him and rescuing him is only going to create more anxiety. So I'm going to stand back and do my work from just out of his reach. I do not like to baby dogs when I'm working on them. I like them to be responsible for himself. I'm going to blow dry him using the Madden pin brush. This brush is great for really thick coats and this dog has an extremely thick coat. The idea of this brush is to break up the hair and loosen it up. It's not the finishing brush that I will use to totally fluff him, but that brush is a little too harsh for breaking up the coat. And this one will not irritate his skin as we work on it while it's wet. Because you'll find if a dog is really wet, um, the, pin, the slicker brushes may tend to scrape the skin because they get right down on the skin when the coat is wet. That doesn't happen once the coat is dry, but if the coat is really wet, it will happen. As I brush him, I'm creating a line. I'm using my finger to push the hair or my thumb to push the hair up out of the way, creating a line as I work or allowing the blow dryer to separate the hair so I can see down to the skin. So wherever I work, I want to be able to see the skin. He's settled down now and he's stopped looking to me to rescue him. So I've unhooked the leash. He's realized that it's okay and that the bad thing's not going to happen. I give him long, slow strokes across his body. That is comforting. Now he's looking for me to rescue him again. So I'm standing just out of his reach to prevent that from happening. And this is one of the reasons why I like working with the Grummer's Harness because as he pops up or strains towards me, it doesn't put any pressure on his throat. And you see how he's 
looking down towards the table, so that's telling me he wants to lay down. So I'm going to loosen him up enough to give him that opportunity. He's relaxing, which is awesome. And there he goes down. If you give them room to go down, they will oftentimes. And since the blow drawing, I'm giving him lots of praise here because he laid down, that's awesome. I love it when they relax themselves so they get extra attention for that. So here again, you can see I'm creating the line so that I can see the skin, pushing the top hair up out of the way and brushing from the skin out instead of just brushing over the top. As I'm blow drying, you'll see me go back and forth between going over the top and coming from the skin out. But if you're brushing your pet at home, you really wanna go from the skin out everywhere that you can. So everywhere I work, I'm using hair to put my hand to push the hair up out of the way. He's turning his head away from the tape from the dryer, so I was just scratching behind his ears to relax him. So I'll just continue on brushing the entire body. I'm going to try to get it 95% of the way dry before I move on to the slicker brush. It's really important when you're brushing your dog to remember to brush the ears, the tail, under the arms, the collar area. If the dog wears a harness, be sure to get the chest under the arms and around the rib cage where the harness lies. I always recommend working on your dog on a surface just as a grummer would and giving them a non-slip pad underneath them so that they can get comfortable and have sure footing. The technique that I am using for the blow drying is the same technique that you would use for your regular brushing. A dog with a coat this length should be brushed thoroughly from one end to the other at least every five days and every time that you wash the dog or the dog gets wet. If a dog with a coat this length gets wet or washed, and you do not brush the dog and comb the dog from one end to the other that same day, the dog will become matted, usually within 24 hours. So we'll just continue brushing. I'm going back and forth between the pin brush and the slicker brush. The slicker brush is being used to fluff up the hair, especially on the legs. He's being very calm. He's being a good boy. Yes, good boy. He's getting praise in, in between the sections of work, being allowed to relax, using long strokes when I pet him for praise. I like to have the dog stand up when I'm working on the legs. always supporting the knees when I'm working on the back legs. It's really important. 
you can see my hand keeping the knee from pushing forward or buckling while I'm working on that area. A nice loose touch when I'm working really helps a dog to relax. That's a good boy. Encouraging him to lay down so I can do the top of his back, doing the line brushing technique. Again, pushing the hair out of the way so I can go from the skin out. and brushing over the top to get it in the direction I want it to go. He's such a good boy. Good. I tend to be quiet when I'm working on him because he's easily excitable. When I give him too much verbal praise, he wants to pop up. So I'm keeping my praise to touch as much as possible, as that suits his personality. Here I'm using a Chris Christensen face comb. It's a five inch comb. It's super fine and extra, extra fine teeth. I like to use this around the face. You do not want to use the extra, extra fine area over the whiskers, as the whiskers could get caught in the comb. So you use the wider side when combing around the face, and I'm just using a fluffing action with the comb. He's so relaxed. He's such a good boy. I look forward to many years of grooming him. Being sure to get behind the ears really good. So I've been blow drying for almost 15 minutes. His entire appointment time is one hour. So we spent about seven minutes in the tub and 15 minutes on the drying, which would put us at 22 minutes, which leaves us plenty of time to get his scissoring done without the use of high powered tools.
the thing I like about the pin brush is this dog has an extremely thick coat, super dense. And using this pin brush, you can see it's not tugging on his hair at all. It just glides through the hair. And that makes this so much more comfortable for a dog. If I used a firm, slicker brush on him, it would be tugging, even though there's no tangles in his hair. Now we're going to brush underneath. He doesn't really have the personality that I think will lay on his side, at least not during this first grooming. So I did it that way. You notice when I'm working on the back end, I put my arm up under the dog and support him from the opposite side. That typically will keep the dog standing and um, sure of himself while I'm doing what I'm doing. Now that the hair is all broken up, I'm going to do most of the work with the double-sided slicker and you notice I have my finger right in the center of the brush putting pressure right in the middle of the brush just to give it enough firmness so that it, it goes down deep into the hair. If I just held it by the handle and did not put pressure with my finger it would not be very effective. So you can see my finger in the center of the brush giving it just enough pressure to reach down in. Now I'm using my thumb as I move up towards the head and I want to direct the, the brush so that it's the corner of the brush that's hitting the face as opposed to the full length of the brush, the full width of the head of the brush. Then I'll put my thumb on the edge and direct the brush towards the direction that I want it to go. The harness unhooks on the side so that I can reach the side of the dog easily. That's a good boy. So when I release a dog from the work that likes to pop up on me, I'll use the popping up as a reward. And then after the rewarding is over, then I ask them to go back to work. When brushing a dog with very thick hair like this one, you have to put a little bit of pressure into the brush. Now that the hair is nearly dry, the brush is not reaching down towards the skin because the hair is so thick. I'm checking him to make sure he's all dry, make sure there's no tangled feeling areas. So now it's time to check over the entire dog with my wide tooth poodle comb. It's the Chris Christensen butter comb number 004. A wide tooth comb works really good on these thick haired dogs rather than a narrow tooth comb for this checking over to make sure that there's no knots in the hair. I'm going to go over every inch of the dog making sure that the comb slides through. If it does not then I go back in with the brush and then recheck with the comb. I never use the comb to pull out knots, it's only to check for knots. I'm 
making sure the ears behind the ears, the chin, the cheeks, the mustache, everywhere I can slide the comb from the skin all the way out. Now I'm going to remove the harness. He's being a really good boy. And comb and brush underneath the harness. He's nice and relaxed now, so I'm not worried about him getting too anxious. So I found a tangle up under his arm, so I'm going to take my brush and work on picking that out. And recheck with the comb. Now the comb slides through. There's another one. That area is usually caused from wearing a harness, so you have to pay really close attention to those areas. He's such a good boy. So I'm gonna put him on the floor for just a moment and get my table prepared for scissoring him and clipping him. So I got my fine tooth comb out and my straight scissors. And we'll get started on scissoring. I'm going to shave the hair off the pads of his feet. Let him smell the clipper. After he gets done checking out the clipper, I'm going to trim around his eyes. Just taking a tiny bit out off the corner of the eyes. Cotons do not look good with the eye sco area scooped out. I'm going to trim his belly. I don't get carried away with this type of trimming, especially on white dogs. Just a nice light touch with a seven blade. Now I'm going to use my clippers on a 30 blade setting. Get him used to the feeling around his shoulder and shave the pads of his feet. Not digging in, just cleaning off the bottoms. Making sure he's familiar with the tool as I go. Don't want to be rude about it. Always careful not to lift his legs too high. Good boy. Good. Take the very end of the sheath just a little closer. That's a good boy. So I'm using a seven under his tail. light touch. Don't want it shaved too close. That's a good boy. Good boy. Give me five. <laughs> Another praise session with the thing that he finds comforting. It's 
seeing if he knows how to shake or give a five. He's like, I don't know you that well. So I'm waiting for him to relax. Going to put the harness back on because he's getting too excited from the attention. Some dogs you can't give too much attention while you're working on them because it makes them more anxious instead of less. So to keep him calm, it's best that I work quietly. I'm going to ask him for some self-control. So now I'm using my fine tooth comb. It's an Utsumi finishing comb. Scissor off around his feet. I was not the last person to trim his hair, so there are some things that I will be changing on his outline. I don't like the placement of his tuck up, so I'll be filling some hair in there. And just giving him an overall more balanced look as his hair grows out and I change the shape a little bit. He's a beautiful little dog. He's going to be a lot of fun to work on. Has a gorgeous coat. So the area where I'm going to fill in more hair is where the back leg goes into the underline of the body. That's just too sharp and too high up for my taste. I'll also fill in a little bit of hair on the front side of his front legs so that he doesn't have that dip going from his chest down to his toes. It'll be a straight line. That will give him a little more fullness. And that tiny bit of hair grown out will change the entire dynamic of the haircut. I have cotons that I groom that have hair all the way to the floor. I have cotons that I groom that have an Asian fusion hairstyle. Some have more of a teddy bear hairstyle. Some are a natural shaggy look about two inches long. So it all depends on the client's preference and the ease of care that the client is looking for. Another inch of hair on this dog would double the amount of work needed to upkeep. Another two or three inches of hair on this dog will cause about an hour extra of work a week, minimum. This is a nice length for him. It just needs some changing in the shaping. I imagine by January I'll have a good shape on him that I like. But more importantly than that, it's what the customer likes. So now that the cut hair is comb throughable with the wide tooth comb, I can use my finishing comb and just fluff over the top as I'm scissoring. Good boy. Good. He's a very obedient dog.
who will just continue scissoring, making sure his hair is even. Combing it up and scissoring it off. So I've removed the harness to finish him up. He's standing nicely with a lot of self-control. So even though he gets a scissored trim, I don't want him to look like a Bichon. So I'm not trying to give him a Bichon shape. Keeping it shorter in the ears, shorter on top of the head. Little um, natural flow around the eyes. I don't like a scissored visor over the eyes on Havanese or Cotons. I like a little flow on the outer corner of the eye. Shooting for a nice level top line. It's a good boy. Make sure all the lengths of the coat match. Thank you for watching.